welcome to Excel 2010 Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts. I'm Trainer Lori. Which keyboard shortcuts? Well, if you live in Excel, you're going to find two or three that you will definitely want to memorize. To do that, I would recommend that you write them on a little yellow sticky and put it right on your desktop until you don't need to look at it anymore. And then you write two or three more down until you have them all memorized how to use the keyboard, you use, in, for example, Control plus Z. If you see it written like that, that means you hold down the Control and then you hold down the Z without the plus sign and without the shift for caps. Alt shows your key tip badges. Just click the Alt and you can see these numbers and letters. Now all I have to do is hit F or H for File or Home. Or you can see any of the quick access t keyboards across the top. If you prefer, F10 does the same thing. Now if you hold down Shift plus F10, it will actually open up the dialog boxes. Control Page Up will move your cursor from tab to tab to the right, whereas Control Page Down moves it to the left. Control Shift with ampersand applies the outline border. Control Shift plus underscore removes the outline border. Control Shift plus the tilde will change the formatting. Control Shift tilde makes it a general format. Now the tilde is up by the one with the um, single quote. Control Shift with the dollar sign turns it into currency. Control Shift with percentage turns it into percentage with no dec decimals. And Control Shift pound will change it to a custom date. And control spacebar will select the whole column, which you might want to do before you do the formatting. Control shift plus inserts rows. Hit it as many times as you need for as many rows as you need. Control minus deletes the rows. And shift F11 inserts an entirely new worksheet. It's like using the Insert Sheet button, but you, maybe if you can't see it, it would be useful to have the keyboard shortcut. Control plus semicolon. This is my favorite one. That inserts today's date. I use that one all the time. I think everyone should memorize that one. Control Shift plus the colon, which means you would hit um, the, the shift to make it the colon. That will insert the time. Control G, another one of my favorites. It's go to. You can use F5 if you prefer, but I remember Control G for Go To. And then once you're in there, you can hit Alt S, and that will take you to Special. And that's a really good place to play. You can watch one of my other tutorials on why you should do that. Control Shift U will increase the formula bar size. And it tells you if you hover over the drop down, it'll tell you it'll expand the formula bar, or once you've expanded it, it will do just the opposite. It will collapse the formula bar. So it's a toggle switch. Control, Alt, and V is, you know, uh, Control V is paste, but Control, Alt, V is paste special. Of course, you'd want to Control C first to copy and then use the paste special, Control, Alt, V. Control W closes the window and it sounds kind of the same, so it's easy to remember. Control W closes window. So it will just close the window of the sheet that you're in. Alt F4 closes Excel, which is very handy to know if you've lost the use of your mouse. You think, how am I going to get out of here? <laughs> it's Alt F4. Now, if you are writing macros, you might want to be able to use the control with some numbers or letters, but most of them are taken. The ones that are not taken is E, J, M, and Q. So you could save a macro, uh, a, a shortcut key for a macro using those letters because they're not taken already. And if you use Alt F8, it actually opens up the macro window. And Alt F11 will open Visual Basic for Applications if you need to go in and make some changes. Control F1 shows or hides the ribbon. It's like using the Expand and Collapse button. It's also like double clicking on the tab. F9 or Shift F9 will manually recalculate the workbook before saving. It's like going into Excel formulas, uh, Excel options formulas, and then choosing manual. 
but this is the manual that allows you to do it. So F9 calculates all worksheets in all open workbooks, whereas Shift F9 calculates just the active worksheet. So if you have a lot of formulas and a lot of worksheets throughout the workbook, you might want to just hit Shift F9 so you don't take the time to recalculate all of them. Control F9 minimizes the workbook to a, an icon and Control F10 maximizes the workbook. It's like using the controls in the top right corner. And with the arrow key, it depends on which arrow you use, it will either take you to the next worksheet or if you're inside a worksheet, it will move you to the next non-blank cell. And I can tell you I use that all the time, end down arrow to take me to the next non-blank cell. It may not take me to the end of the data because there may be blanks within the data but it will take me to the next non-blank cell. End plus arrow moves to the last or first cell, depending on if it's down or up arrow. And shift, control shift arrow selects, it will actually select uh, to the last or first cell. So control arrow is really good to know, but control shift arrow actually selects or highlights all the data. Alt plus enter inserts a new line within the cell. So if I click Alt-Enter, it'll put my cursor onto the second line, and you can see the, the, the data disappeared here. It didn't really disappear. It rolled up into a line that I can't see. So it shows me that I'm on the second line. Now if I hit Control-Enter, uh, this is a little more complex. First you select the cells, then you type your data in, like NA, and then hit Control-Enter instead of just Enter, and it will fill it with whatever you put in that first cell. So it'll fill a whole range if, uh, if you need to do it quickly. And then Shift-Enter will move your cursor up instead of down. Normally Enter would make your cursor go down, but if you want it to go backwards, you would hit Shift-Enter. Tab will move you from column to column, but Shift-Tab will move you backwards. Control-Tab moves you between the tabs in the dialog box. So once you're in a dialog box, it'll help move you around in there and control shift tab will move you backwards in a dialog box. If you want to know more, just hit F1 and it'll and type in keyboard shortcuts and it'll take you to all of them. Uh, there's a lot to learn, but uh, these are the ones that you'll probably want to start memorizing. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. And if you like it, please click like.